all right jumping into actually a brand new series um, this video is gonna be the start of it just to show kind of what sphere break is considering the channel is called blitzball mania but uh, sphere break is a mini game in Final Fantasy 10 2 I'm gonna play through actually quite a bit of games of this and you know kind of see what we can record um, but anyways uh, without further ado let's kind of go through the rules first uh, you guys, if you guys know what Sphere Break is, you can totally skip this video at this point. It basically goes over like what is Sphere Break, what's an Echo Multiplier, what's a Coin Multiplier, like what are the rules. Uh, I wanted to go over this just because it would clear up some confusion in case people have to leave a comment. But yeah, uh, let's start with what's Sphere Break. Sphere Break is a brand new game. I'm going to screw up the word Sphere so much. Sphere Break is a brand new game brought to you by Lord Rin. Uh, the game requires coins and core sphere to play. Uh, if I remember right, you only use coins for ours, our purposes, I think. Uh, but to get started, all you need is some coins. So he actually ends up giving you some coins, I believe, once you go through some of this. What are coins for? Uh, to put it simply, in Sphere Break, you use coins to defeat your opponent's core sphere. Uh, each coin is marked with a number, 1 through 9, combine the numbers to defeat the core sphere. So it's actually a lot of math, so like if the number is 4, then you multiply, like 12 is a multiplier of 4, and you know, it's it adds up. Like if you do 11, it's not a multiplier of 4, you don't you don't complete the, the core thing. Uh, there are many, many different kinds of coins, of course. Some kinds of, coin, some kinds of coins are probably still waiting to be discovered, which means you're going to discover them as you play through the game. Uh, yeah, so I'll probably be doing a lot of off-camera stuff looking for coins. Uh, it, I don't know. I might record. It's weird. It, I, I'm torn on it. So you can't have a game of Sphere Rick without coins in the Core Sphere. The Core Sphere is a special sphere discovered by Lord Rin himself. When does he become a Lord Rin? I feel like he was just Rin. This is a fancy boy. Uh, when the Core Sphere is combined with coins, a strange power is born. That's exciting. It is a power that can bring both great wealth and object ruin to those who touches, who, who those it touches. Uh, the, es the essence of this power has been distilled into the game we call Sphere Break. Okay, cool. Now comes the real stuff. So that was just kind of a background. The rules. The rules are what matter. But enough of this small talk. On to the rules. Here's all the coins. Helm coins, Zervan coins, Coyote coins, and Flan coins. You'll see they're named after fiends. Uh, you can play my practice course sphere until you get familiar with the game. That's exciting. So basically, he's just going to go through a long list of rules, uh, kind of describing what it is. I'm going to go through it all just, you know, just to cover, like, the bare minimum of, like, like the, the very basics. Welcome to the world of Sphere Break. Sphere Break is a race against the clock to create multiples of the core sphere's core number. So math. By combining the numbers of the 16 coins on the board. That's 3, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, whatever. It's all divisible. Uh, course sphere on the coins. Toro covers a course sphere on the coins, both clear to last place. The sphere in the center of the board is called the core sphere. The number on the core sphere is called the core number. The core number can be any number from 1 to 9. In this example, the core number is 3. So entry coins, so the four coins in the middle, actually, the gold coins. Uh, the four coins surrounding the core sphere, so the core sphere is the blue one in the center. The entry coins are the four around the blue sphere, and then the border coins are the silvers. Um, but yeah, entry coins are central to advancing the game and must be provided by the player. Without entry coins, you can't play sphere. Hence, the core sphere is already provided, it doesn't matter. Uh, you must have at least four different entry coins to play sphere break. Entry coins used in the game are lost once the game is over, so you actually use these, they're not permanent. Uh, however, there are places you can find new entry coins. You can also win them while playing Sphere Break. So you can probably get some rare coins by winning games as well. Uh, you can sell any unwanted. If I remember right, they don't sell for much, so it doesn't matter. Border coins, of course, are silver ones. Uh, 12 border coins. Uh, they're used in combination with entry coins to make that multiplier in the set. Uh, there are 16 entry and border coins on the board at the start of the game. So 4 golds, 12 silvers. Uh, all coins are numbered from 1 to 9. Combine these numbers to make multiples. So math. It's a lot of math. <laughs> multiples are the core number. Basic rules of play. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's essentially a numbers game. It's essentially mathematics. Uh, you win by combining the numbers on the coins to make multiples of the core number. Uh, so yeah, it's going to go through a little bit of like tutorial of like combine these. 
Uh, core sphere deploys, displays the core number, which is eight in the current example. Uh, help window at the top of the screen contains two vital pieces of in information. Uh, the flashing is the break multiplier, which is the number in the center. Uh, that's eight. Um, and it, it, it kind of does a little bit of the math for you. Eight, 16, 24, you know, it tells you what's divisible. Uh, yeah, so, so getting the break multiplier is the goal. Uh, so, yeah, you're going to select coins to do this. Um, yeah, coins who add up to 8, 16, 24, 32. That's the whole point. Uh, first coin selected has to be a entry coin. Uh, so you've got to use the gold ones like every single time. So you choose an entry, entry coin. Um, yeah, it'll tell you what you've selected. Um, yeah, and then the coins cannot be unselected. You can't like go back and be like, no, I didn't want to do that. No, you've, you've got to stick with it. So yeah, rest of the turn, you're going to choose another coin. Uh, you have a sum of five, and then you want to make eight, 16, or 24. So yeah, we do three, and then it kind of, you know, it core break, and then we, we won, or we didn't really win, but we got farther. So it becomes six when you select one, and you have to hit eight, 16, or 24. So once you hit eight, of course, it breaks, and then you move on to the next number. So it's up to you what, how many coins you use. Um, you don't want to use all of them because they don't reappear um, immediately. They're, they, you know, they take some time. So it becomes 11, and this is kind of describing how you skipped eight and now you're about on 16. So the next three breaks are 16, 24, and 32, and then you're gonna want to do a core break of 16 or 24 or 32. You do 16 in the example, and then it's fine. Yeah, see, however, carelessly using a large number of coins is not to your advantage because they disappear at the end of the turn. They'll come back eventually, but they won't come back immediately. Uh, entry coins in the middle will never disappear. The gold coins are with you forever. So it actually increases by one each turn. Uh, so if something's nine, like in the bottom... Uh, bottom leftish area on the screen like that's going to disappear next turn if we don't use it turns next. so you have a set amount of turns uh, to meet the quota so the quota is 20 um, so turn 1 out of 15 core number is 3 five and one and you met a quota of one so you used one border coin so you hit the the one uh, the issue of course of using two little coins you won't meet the quota using too many you might run out of coins so you can finish the game and you need to get two coins on the border here to win and that's a win right there I mean that's you know 20 winning and losing. Deciding factors. This is going to be quite a long video. Uh, this tutorial explains the various conditions that determine the outcome of the game. Uh, if you win, various prizes are awarded depending on your actions over the course of the game. On the other hand, if you lose, your four entry coins are lost. I, I think you lose them regardless. I might be wrong on that now, now that I think about it. But a single core break is not enough to win a game of sphere break. You'll need to make many core breaks as you advance towards the final turn. So you just gotta meet the quota about the specified amount of turns they give you. So a lot of coins are that used there. Uh, the issue of course is, I mean, if you don't have any coins to actually, you know, make this, the like break or whatever, um, you get in a lot of trouble and you lose the game. So sum is 19, the core number is 8, so the next break multiplier, it'll make core break is 24. You're at 19, though. You've only got one coin to use. When you use the one, it's just, I mean, it can't be created, and then you immediately lose. So 
was meeting the quota. Border coins used to make a core break disappear from the board for several turns, so it's generally adva advantageous to use as few border coins as possible. Um, but if you use less, then you don't meet the quota. It's, it's a balancing game in a lot of ways. So quota in the upper left hand corner, you need 20 border coins to use this game, or at least meet the at least meet the quota of 20. So increases by one, you use another one. And then if you select an entry coin, like two entry coins, uh, it doesn't add to the quota, it's just, you know, it's whatever. You can use as many entry coins as you want, but it doesn't really help you that much. So if you meet the quota before the end of the turn, um, the end of the amount of turns you get, you do win the game. So that is nice. And then if the quota isn't met, as you're going to see here, I mean, you just lose. It's, I feel like it's pretty straightforward, but it's definitely helpful to describe some of this stuff. Concludes the quota tutorial. Alright, cool. Let's go to the time limit. So there is actually a time limit for each turn, so you can't be, you know, using your quadratic formula to think out the best pathway. You just gotta act. So, it, it, time actually, the time limit actually did depends on the game uh, some are some give you a minute some give you 30 seconds it really depends so as soon as the uh, time starts of course you got a second you got zero and you lose once time's up regardless of where you are Coin traits. So this is actually interesting. It's, it's a little bit. This is kind of leading towards the prizes you get. So border traits are special powers inherent to some border coins. So that one doesn't have a trait. It's you know it's dashed out. You don't get anything. But if you get another one, it's plus 50 gil. And you know, um, they look identical, but the traits are different. Honestly, I really wouldn't worry about the traits. In my opinion, they don't matter as much. I think sometimes you can get like, um, like coins. So maybe then, but it really depends. So then the value goes down. You know, the traits determine the value. What I actually prefer is entry coin traits. Um, so they give quota times two, which is obviously very, very good considering it helps you get your quota quicker. Um, so if you select that one, then you select a coin. Uh, normally it only give you one point towards quota, but it should give you two because it's quota times two. Yeah, so a lot of really good players, like you can't you can't beat them without these coins. I mean they're just incredibly crucial. And then not all entry coins have traits, of course. It really just depends. So echoes. This is where you really get into intense matches. Uh, so coin count echoes, what those do is if you use a certain amount number of coins uh, in each game, or not in each game, but in each turn, like if you use four coins. Uh, each turn then you get like bonus quota so uh, for example in this when making a core break if you use the same number of coins that you used in the previous turn you receive bonus quota points making it much easier to meet the quota um, this technique is called coin count echo uh, it's kind of what I explained if you use you know 
four coins for each turn. Um, but yeah, um, if it depends on the entry coins you choose to begin the game with. Um, if they have the C count echo trait, then coin count, coin count will appear in the middle left window. Um, top number is the number of coins you used to make a core break in the previous turn. The bottom number shows how many turns you've successfully echoed that coin count. Currently, both numbers are zero because you haven't really selected anything. Um, so you actually um, make a regular core break. So that's two. So you use two coins. Or, sorry. Use a total of three entry coins and border coins to make the core break. Uh, sorry, so it's three coins. See, I'm even kind of rough on this. Um, but if you make another break with three coins, then you should get bonus. Um, yeah, so echo bonus is displayed. And then it would normally give us two points, one for each border coin used. However, you also get the echo bonus, uh, which is two times one equals two. Uh, but the more you do that, the more quota you get. So if, if that makes sense. Uh, and if you make another echo on the next turn, echo times two using two border coins will be four. So even though you use two coins, you get four. And then I believe it's, you know, six, eight, ten. It, it just keeps on adding. It, and it really helps because some people have a quota of like 300, I think, if I remember correctly. It, it's it's kind of ridiculous. Um, if you fail to make an echo, then the echo count drops back down. Like it doesn't, it doesn't stay. Like if you make three, 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 and then two, like it'll just drop. You lose it. Yeah, see, you use three. Your coin count to the left is going to go down to one, and then echo zero. So you have to make uh, next turn off these one coin, which obviously doesn't help because you got these entry points and then the next one is actually multiplier echoes which I'm actually not that clear on which is obviously awesome since I'm explaining this um, this is more for the series though not for like anyone who's looking to play sphere break um, just so people have a rough understanding of what's going on yeah when making a core break if you use the same multipliers you used in the previous turn you receive bonus quota points making it much easier to make the quota uh, it's multiplier echo. Uh, so they have to have the multi multiplier echo trait, kind of like the coin echo trait. They have to have those before you use them. The entry coins have to have those. Um, it'll appear in the middle left. Top number is the multiplier you used to make a core break in the previous turn. It's really similar to coin count. Uh, the bottom number shows how many turns you've successfully echoed that multiplier. Currently both numbers are zero. Of course, you haven't selected anything. Um, so if you make a you know, two is really easy. Uh, so of eight, eight is four times. Uh, the core no this turns core number of two. So if our core number, or if our core break on the next turn also has a sum that is four x, the core number, we will have successfully made a multiplier echo. So it's five. Um, if it's you know four x, so like. 12, 16, 20, it's a multiplier. And there it is. So you echoed. But that's actually it. I'm going to end this video here. Um, those are kind of the rules. I'm going to record another video where I actually play the game. But uh, that'll be a separate one from this. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And when you come back uh, to this series at least, like it's just going to be playing Sphere Break. It's not going to be any sort of rule text. It's going to be just Sphere Break and it's going to be ideally good. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys for watching and I will see you.